in the morning. It's 6.30 a.m. Gotta watch the sunrise. It's a little bit cloudy, but still pretty nice. So my understanding is unless you have automatic doors, most chicken keepers have to get up at the crack of dawn, which is actually quite nice. Um, I really like this schedule. So while I do have to fit my schedule to the chickens somehow, sometimes I just stay up till the morning, let them out, and then go to sleep like I'll do today. I'll start with the chickens that have not actually really been featured in a video. So what happens sometimes is if I am sleeping, here they come. They, oh my god, it's so, she's so dirty. They're all so dirty. <laughs> it was raining all day yesterday and they were just playing in the mud for some reason. Hello, children. So all the chickens have names. Uh, I, my sister named this one, oop. My sister named this one Nadine. I don't know what that one's named. And this is the one chicken I named. This adorable little girl is named Tyrone. Not sure why I went with Tyrone. I just thought it was a, I don't know, a pretty fitting name. Very beautiful name, and it fits her well. These chickens are called Silkies, and I bought them like I'd buy everything on Craigslist. They were $25 each, and they are eating a two-day-old watermelon. I should probably take that away from them. We'll come back to the Silkies in a minute, because the Comets are the one... I guess they're technically called Golden Comets. I just called them Comets. It's just, like, generic chicken. You can hear them now. So the comets have a few different sounds they make. One is the like, I'm hungry, and the other one is like, I'm dying, like I need to be saved right now. And they chose to do the I'm dying scream when I don't let them out of their coop in time. So basically I can hear them from the bedroom, they just start like screaming at the top of their lungs, and then they wake me up, so they are my alarm anytime that I forget to let them out. Oh, so there's, I wonder if they would like bacon, I have bacon in my pocket. If for some reason you're ever in my backyard, uh, don't hold anything in your hand, because they automatically think it's for them. Well, I guess they could eat bacon, but nope, it's my bacon. As you can see, the run is extremely messy. It's because I clean the inside of the coop. There's also cardboard everywhere for some reason. I don't remember why I have cardboard out here, but I completely raked out the inside yesterday and it got too dark to do the outside. Excuse me while I finish my bacon. Alice named these three. That's, um... That's Bonk, Bink, and Hilda. Bink was originally extremely undersized, and we all we both thought she was gonna die of heart disease or something, because uh, she was half the size of the others, and now she's the biggest chicken of all six. So I was having pretty bad problems with ventilation. It was just so hot in here. I mean, this is a shed, it's not made for animals. And it was just, just this one window, which you can see I reinforced with screen and then chicken wire because I'm scared of like raccoons getting in. I don't even know if the ra that would stop raccoons, but it's better than it was. And obviously no air can flow if, it, if there, there's only one opening. It doesn't make any sense. First, I added this second window. I just drilled a hole in the wall and then stuck a box fan. It's a plastic tub drilled in half and put on top of the outside of the box fan as like a rain cover so that the electronics don't get wet. And it works perfectly, actually. It's really, it's like the perfect size. This box fan, when I turn it on, on warm days, it blows air into the coop and then out this front window here. And then I added this uh, pretty cheap insulation. It's made for a garage. It was actually in my garage, but I just moved it in here and it keeps it so cool. Unfortunately, the chickens don't get along as I was hoping they would. So I just had to add this barrier. Before I put this wall up, I had purchase going across this way, but I took them down so I could put this wall. So right now they're using aquarium stands to perch on. Uh, which is a little scuffed, but I'll, I'll get to it. It's fine. Everything's fine. They also actually perch up here. I don't even know how they get up there, but they perch in the ceiling and on these beams. So, uh, and it's raining again. Wow, it's been raining so much. So let's get a full view of the coop. I'll just let the chickens out for now. I only let them out when I'm supervising them right now because they, uh, they enjoy the grass. I no longer fertilize the grass, but honestly, it's pretty dang green. It doesn't really need it. You can even see where I had to stop mowing because it keeps raining so much. And also this is the septic system right here and it keeps it very lush. I'm a little worried it's too lush. Maybe there's something wrong with the septic, but hopefully not. So I'll show you the multiple iterations of the exterior here, but this is the current iteration. At first it was a little three foot fence and then they quickly outgrew that. And then it was up to a six foot fence, but then we started having hawks in the area which was not a thing a year ago. There were truly no hawks. The last bird, I mean, my neighbors keep animals as well. The last animal anyone has lost to an animal was a hawk 10 years ago. And uh, then hawks came this year and started taking animals. 
from my neighbors. So I completely re rebuilt the entire fence uh, with, this is actually mostly recycled wood uh, that I was using from other projects. So some of these, what is that? So some of the wood is actually from some old video backgrounds and the rest are from uh, some garden beds I had. And then I did have to buy a little bit of wood. So like, this entire door is just recycled materials I had. Uh, so I'm not much of a hoarder. I pretty much throw away everything except for lumber because they always have uses. Now, how is this in the ground, you ask? Um, I, I, I hammered these metal poles about eight inches in the ground and that's it. I just screwed the wood to them. If this did not let airflow pass through, it 100% would have collapsed by now. But this is actually pretty sturdy. I thought it would wobble more. I mean, like, look at this. This is, it's not even moving. So yeah, here it wobbles, but like, who cares? It actually holds really well. And so I, it's now eight feet. It went from three feet to six feet to eight feet. The reason I did eight feet was so that I could add this hawk mesh. And that way the doors can still open and, uh, completely hawk proof. In fact, there's been a hawk on top of <laughs> on top of the quail uh, trying to get in and it couldn't get into either of these. So I then added a second barrier on the exterior since the chickens don't get along. So I added this here and then the comets realized they could jump up onto this part. So at first they didn't actually realize this was open. They would try to get to the silkies, uh, but I think it was kind of like the, the roped elephant analogy. I don't know what it's called. Basically, you chain up an elephant, and the elephant can't escape the chain, it gives up, and then you can just put like a string on the elephant, and the elephant no longer tries to escape because it simply thinks that it knows it won't do any good. So I was like, haha, a chained elephant and my chickens. And it worked all summer pretty much, except for a couple weeks ago when Bink decided to try and jump up and went to harass the silkies. So I had to put it up here so that they're separate. The greatest danger to the silkies is the other chickens. And the garden is completely overgrown, as you can see. I didn't even plant anything this year. I just had trouble finding the time. But that'll be for next year. It'll, it'll still be there. Go eat that fertile grass. Enjoy that fertile grass. They started wandering to the driveway. <laughs> they, they think that I'm gonna chase them to put them back in. I'm just following them. This is the, the old hay that I had just raked out. But it's all wet now. Great. So when it's nice and sunny and like a nice day, they just come and hang out under the bushes and just sit there for hours. Today they'll probably run around for a few minutes and then get scared of the rain. So back to the silkies. I honestly prefer the silkies. They're very sweet. They're very submissive. You kind of can just mess with them all you want. <laughs> and Tyrone is completely wet now. So they're very soft. They're as soft as they look. And the soft feathers, it's almost like a fur. So when they get wet, <laughs> they just have this like late 90s. Like if I gave Tyrone frosted tips, she would look so dope. The, the Silkies just don't even acknowledge that the rain exists. So like if it starts raining in the winter and they come out, they will actually die of frostbite. So I know at the start of the video, I said one of these chickens was named Nadine and the other is named something else. I don't actually know which is which. I honestly cannot tell them apart at all. And when I go and try and pick them up, I can tell because they actually, when I first gave them this area, they didn't comprehend that that was their way to safety. So instead they would sleep under this. And so I'd have to come every night and grab the one by one and then close the door. So even if I got automatic chicken doors, I'd be worried that the silkies are gonna just get trapped outside. <laughs> so I could go crazy and I have an extra ring camera that I could set up, but I'd need another solar panel over here. And um, I could have a ring camera like at the silkies to make sure they're in and then I could do an automatic door. But by that point, I'm spending like hundreds of dollars on the chickens when I could just come out and not be lazy and do it myself. You, oh, she's so dirty. She looks homeless. So the Silkies initially, I, like I said, they're on Craigslist. A very nice person, but they had actually never touched grass. Like unironically, the Silkies had literally never touched grass in their lives. Uh, they were being kept in a slightly above ground coop. It was about six feet long, three feet wide, and that's what they grew up in. So yeah, they were kind of scared of grass at first, like they were, didn't know what they were touching. And the Silkies actually don't have any eggs right now. They don't lay them as often as the others, maybe because they're younger, but I'd say we get like a dozen a week from the Silkies. I don't know if that's normal or not, but I've been giving them extra calcium and stuff just to be certain that they're like all good and, and not uh, egg bound or anything, but they still pass eggs, um, just not quite as frequently. And it's raining pretty hard. I need to go get the other chickens. Other by Stan. This is where I buried Stan, the bearded dragon. 
He still doesn't have a marker, he just has these pavers, but that's where Stan is. Under this maple tree? Maple? I think. Okay, now they're shaded by the rain and it's gonna be a pain to get them. All right, I'm gonna cheat and just get their favorite, one of their favorite snacks. I know if I do this trick too often, they'll stop calling for it. Also, the peanut butter reminds me, kind of having a mouse problem. It's not too bad. I think I got it under control. At first, I felt bad about killing mice, but then I was like, boy, if I trap them live, where am I gonna put a bunch of mice? So unfortunately, I just used the, the mouse traps. Turns out the chickens actually murder, the, like they murder them and eat them. I did not know that. Come on, chicken. Come on. Oh, that was easy. Oh yeah, this is shrimp. Ah, oh, loser, is your trap. Uh, so this is where I've been keeping the food, and the mice have been chewing holes in the top. Ooh. So yeah, that's a, a mouse hole there, and they end up just literally hanging out in there, which is really unsanitary. I mean, mice are kind of disgusting. Uh, so. I was like, well, frick, what do I do? But it turns out it was pretty easy. I just set a ton of mouse traps everywhere the chickens couldn't reach them. And I've already killed over a dozen mice. And I've already seen the chickens eat at least two of them themselves. So uh, my mouse problem might actually not be as stressful as I thought. Should be handled. It looks like the silkies are officially tired of getting rained on. Hello, Tyrone. All right, another tip I need. How do I keep this water cleaner? It looks like I've never cleaned this, but I actually brought them inside and scrubbed them two days ago. Uh, I change the water every day, every morning, and every night. Uh, I have these pavers underneath, but they still just get filthy within like a few hours. The Silky's one doesn't get as filthy though. It's just these nasty little comets. Oh yeah, I never finished what I was saying about my breakfast. So I ate their eggs this morning. I'm still getting used to the whole like watching your pet give birth to your breakfast and then eating it. Like literally the eggs are still warm from being inside of them as I'm preparing and eating them, which makes me slightly uncomfortable, but it shouldn't. I mean, it's better in every way. I know exactly what they're eating. Uh, I know that they're being cared for and not like stuck in a cage, because I'm pretty sure free range eggs just means that they can turn around in a cage. But I don't know, just like looking into her eyes while she's nesting and it's like, I'm producing your breakfast right now. And then I take it from her and then I eat it. It's really not that weird, I, I just need to get over it. I mean, a lot of people are like, every time I say I have chickens, the first thing they say is, do you eat chicken too? And you keep chickens, what? And I never really know how to respond, like, yeah, I guess, I don't know. But I was talking about this on a live stream and David in the chat made, I, I, it was the most obvious point, I never thought about it. Why did people start keeping chickens? It was to eat them. You can still enjoy having them even if you consume them. I'm just not really planning on consuming these. All right, it's raining pretty dang hard. So I'm gonna grab their watermelon rinds, which they devoured. So not the prettiest morning, but at least it'll be cooler today. And the silkies are already getting soaked yet again. All right, I hope this comes up on camera because I just almost walked through a spider web with a diameter of over six feet and I'm terrified to know what made it. Let me try and focus it. All right, you can see it now. Oh, I'm stuck to it. I mean, I guess I would see the spider if it was nearby. It's, okay, do you see where it is now? This is my arm up to my face. It, this is about five feet up. It's all the way to the, it's it's 10 feet tall. Oh my God, I'm I'm not even scared of spiders. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go away. I can't believe I just got kind of scared by a spider web. It's worse that I didn't see the spider. I would have preferred seeing the spider so I knew what kind it was. What kind of spider was that? Can someone tell me? I already had to deal with what I thought was black widows giving birth in my house, but it was false black widows. Okay, it's two days later, and the spider rebuilt the web, and it's actually here today. It's so small, look at, look at the size. I thought it was gonna be some like massive spider. The web goes from here up to there. And it's just this tiny little, tiny little baby spider. So that makes me feel better. So I haven't let the chickens out yet. So I'll take advantage and rake the yard now because the chickens always make it more difficult.
pure luck that this fits through here by about a half inch clearance. Ha, 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 ha.